Well, if doing this to the outside of your home to get the coax over to your radios in your indoor shack, if this makes you just a little bit queasy, well, then let me show you some options that you might have. There are things called window pass-through units. I'm aware of ones made by MFJ Enterprises. Perhaps there are some others, but I'm going to demonstrate one today that was provided to me by MFJ. I don't use this in my home because I broke through the wall and all my coax comes through a single point utility box. Not everybody can do that. You either rent a home or you just will get yourself in a heap of trouble if you go busting a hole in the side of your wall. Or there could be a number of other reasons why you wouldn't do such a thing and a window pass-through unit might be an option for you. I'm not going to do this perfectly because this isn't my installation, but I'm going to take you far enough along and tell you all the things I did leave out that you do need to do so that you could complete this for your shack. Hey everyone, I'm Bob, KD4 BMG HOA Ham. Navigate on over to the MFJ website, go up to the top right corner and click on search, type in the word window, and let's see if that gets us what we need. Haha, <laughs> it does. Look, there's a half a dozen or more window feed-through panels here. You would choose the one that best suits your working conditions day, and I would say give yourself a little bit of opportunity for some future expansion. Let's just pick one, head on over. This is similar to the one that I'm going to demonstrate for you. I'm going to tell you this right now. Once you choose which one you want to use, go ahead and go over to product manuals. Click on Download Product Manual, and you'll get a complete explanation of what this feed-through accomplishes, how you install it, how to do this safely, and anything else that you would need to know to make sure you have it set up correctly for your shack operation. This is the installation after complete. I wanna go over this with you here because there are some things I didn't do that you'll need to do, and I want you to be aware of those as I take you through the build process. This will come in a one by four nominal, meaning it's probably three quarters of an inch by three and a half by four feet long in total, so you'll cut it the length. The height of this was not enough to work in my window. What we have to realize is not a single window manufacturer out there in the world makes their windows to accommodate ham radio. And therefore, MFJ or any manufacturer couldn't possibly have the perfect kit to cover all scenarios. It might just be drop-in for many. For some, you're going to have to do some modification. For me, I needed to scab a piece on the bottom to get the correct height. My piece wasn't long enough. Yeah, that gap there's a problem. That's going to leave uh, air and uh, weather in some rain and snow. Not snow here in Florida. Heat in the summertime. So if you have to make your piece higher than six inches, I should say four inches, then you need to scab a piece on the bottom. So let's talk about that for a second. You'll see me screw this in uh, two places when I do the installation outside. I would do that screw about every eight inches or so, depending on the length of the piece that you're installing. And I would put a very high quality caulking in between here as I scabbed those two pieces together. I would recommend silicone caulk exterior. GE makes a great silicone exterior caulk that lasts for 10 or 15 years. Buy window and door exterior silicone caulk. Put a bead of that in between here, then screw it together. You'll see me pre-drill and screw. Pre-drill this or you'll split it. Then give this whole thing a coat of paint inside and out. Whatever um, color you have on the outside of your home or your windows, try to blend this in. And I would say perhaps you would want to remove all of this. That would be a lot of work. If you removed all of this and painted it all inside and out, that would be phenomenal. At a minimum, get a coat of paint around this, especially on the outside. It's going to help this weather and last better. And then finally, as you install this in any window, this is the weather stripping that came with the MFJ kit. You might need to do some customization. You might need to get some different weather stripping. You might need to get some caulking. In my application, this would have worked just fine. You might need something different. And I think now just one more thought. When this is outside and you've got rain beating down on this and snow, it's possible that this could be a leak 
joint up here at the top, water could seep into that. So maybe you wanna, after you paint, run a bead of that silicone caulk right across the top of this and flatten it out so it looks really nice. Take it down the sides, maybe even on the bottom edge so you don't get any wicking of moisture back up inside of this. That's what I would do if I were installing this permanently. I want you to know that as I show you through the build process, it's simple. Those are things I didn't do that you would need to do. I've already unlocked the window from the inside of the room, and we'll talk more about that later. So now I'm just getting ready for the work, pulling out the screen that's in the way and opening up the window from the outside so we can continue planning. The feed-through unit can be turned either direction. It's not centered top to bottom, so you can adapt to your window. If you had a sliding window, you could install this vertically as well. I cut a small piece of wood off here because I wanted to just test it and see how it would fit in place. Now, wait a second. Are you telling me the reason I have that gap in the bottom left-hand corner is because I cut off a test piece here? Well, yep, that's right. So learn from my mistake. If you need that extra strip of leftover wood, don't cut off a test piece. Now that I'm satisfied, I know how the wood is gonna fit in the track. It's time to measure up to decide how long to cut it. Cut it too long. You can't make it longer if you cut it too short. So cut it on the longer side. You don't wanna to have to fill in a gap with caulking or something else. Make sure you use a square. Get a straight line on this. It's soft wood and therefore I can just use a really small handsaw rather than get out my miter box. Take your time and make sure that this is a nice straight cut. You want it to fit flush against that window track on the inside. Let's go ahead and test one final time for the fit here and see how we are. Well, it didn't fit. And that's a good thing because we would rather it be too large than too small. I draw a line right here where it's interfering with the track and do one final cut. For that final cut, you may have a hard time getting your square in place because it's hitting the connector. So just put another piece of wood on the top side of it and that'll give you room to get away from the connectors. You can put your final mark on it and do one final cut and this time it should fit. Well, let's just test it out. Into the left track, past the right track, it fits. Here's where I realize that I need to scab a piece on the bottom of it because my connectors are hitting the inside track. So now you saw me earlier, I went and I made that adjustment and scabbed the piece onto the bottom. You may need to do that for your application as well. With the feed through unit fitting perfectly, it's time to apply the weather stripping. This was supplied with the MFJ kit and likely some will be supplied with yours. If you're not happy with this weather stripping because it's not a perfect fit for your application, you may have to go to the local home improvement store and find something that's a better fit for your particular use in your particular window. Okay, we're cut the length, our weather stripping is on, it's back in the window, we're ready to hook up coax and start operating, right? Wrong, we still have some things we have to do here. You can see right here is a ground lug on the outside of the unit and on the inside of the unit. How do you tell the difference outside to inside? The outside unit has the weather protection on the connectors, that's the only difference. It's likely interchangeable, but you want these on the outside. We must use proper shack grounding to correctly operate this. And I'll say there's only one exception to this. If you wanna operate like you're doing POTA, you, you wouldn't need to ground that but that means you're not connected to any power in your home. It means you're sitting in a chair looking out this window so you can see your antenna. When we go POTA, we don't ignore our antennas. We're always aware of our surroundings. We're seeing if a storm is headed our way. We're seeing if anybody is coming and touching our antenna. If you're gonna treat operating uh, on the inside of your home like POTA and do it safely, the only way to do it is to watch your antenna through the window that you have this in while you're operating and not connect to any home power. 
As soon as you connect to home power, you're on your electrical grid. You've tied into a grounding system, which is disconnected from this. That's not safe operating. So either you operate like you're truly POTA. Only difference is you have this in your window and you're sitting in a chair in the warmth of your home, watching your antenna, watching the weather conditions, watching other people, or you set this up as a true home shack operation. You put your grounding in this, your shack ground, just like you should properly ground your shack and then you bond that to the house grounding system. That's the only way to do this correctly and safely. All right, the next thing that we need to talk about is what you do for security. Now, MFJ does talk about this. They actually send a separate wooden strip that you can cut the length and kind of wedge on the inside of your window to keep people from getting into your home because now you've created a security issue. It's up to you to make sure that you do this correctly. And maybe you wanna use something alternately than that piece of wood. That's your decision, your call. But understand, as a safe ham radio operator, not only are we needing to do correct grounding, we're trying to make sure that we are protected in our home from people wanting to get into it, we also need to have egress from our home. So don't do anything in your home that in an emergency situation that that window needs to be an egress point that you prevent yourself from doing that. Read the instructions and the recommendations by MFJ, and then you choose how you're going to operate safely. And then I think probably the final thing to talk about here is, you know, your weatherproofing. Anything that's exposed to the outside that you don't actually make any connection with here, make sure that it's weatherproofed properly. And if you do put a piece of coax on here, like I'll show you in just a second, you need to wrap that with weatherproofing tape. If this is your application, you'll be doing some additional activities than what I did, possibly caulking, definitely painting, maybe some additional weather stripping. This took me about an hour to get to this point and it fits perfectly into the space. The only thing left to do is get our coax connected on the outside and then go ahead and get our coax connected on the inside. Don't forget to do that weatherproofing on the outside here and make sure all the other connectors are weatherproofed to your satisfaction. Time to hook up and play radio. So you don't want to put a big hole in the exterior of your home or you can't because you live in a rental or in an apartment building. Where there's a will, there's a way. You know that's how I roll. I'm not gonna let my HOA keep me from operating locally, regionally, and around the world, and I'm certainly not gonna let the inability to put a hole in my wall keep me from connecting my ham radios to antennas safely and correctly. Hope you found this useful, friend. Talk to you soon, 73.